And I'm joined now with the editor of Air and Travel magazine, Owen Corrie, to discuss the continuing travel chaos at Europe's airports this summer. Um, Owen, on this, I think the focus has turned now from the security queues that everyone was complaining about to baggage delays and lost baggage and, and really impacting people's travel plans. Same issue, it's just turning up in different ways. Baggage all understaffed, service areas in the airport, including check-in understaffed. And the, some of the airlines running into cabin crew shortages. Two transatlantic flights yesterday, normally to protect the transatlantic flights, but two transatlantic flights, uh, Boston and Chicago, lost yesterday by Aer Lingus. We're losing not a huge amount of flights this week. Certainly we were losing 12, 13, cancel, two cancellations uh, the previous week. Two or three when you're having 320 departures is not the biggest deal in the world, but that's no use if you're actually on one of those flights. And is that all down to staff shortages because of COVID? Is the strike action impacting uh, travel as well? Because we had that issue, didn't we, in Italy? Certainly. Um, all back to COVID, there's a lot of what's happening with uh, strike action. The most dramatic at the moment is what's happening in SAS. As we lost the Oslo flight yesterday, or today, and 50% uh, of their pilots are out. But a lot of unions through Europe uh, mm -hmm. saying we had money taken away during COVID. Some of them haven't got it back. A mm -hmm. uh, few deals being signed. Uh, Ryanair signed with the British pilots and cabin crew last week. Charles de Gaulle signed with their check-in. That was going to be a big strike. The one we're all watching is the air traffic control in Marseille. That will have uh, a hugely a uh, huge impact because all airlines are asked to reduce the number of flights. Ryanair is well publicised flights with cabin crew right across southern Europe. There's more drama about the calling of these strikes than the strikes themselves because Ryanair has signed deals with the main unions mm -hmm. in all these countries. It tends to be the second or the third union which calls the strike then. The, it's very hard for someone in Ireland to know that, but the impact of the strikes which are ongoing uh, through the Ryanair network yeah. hasn't been great. Hasn't been, we haven't lost a single flight from Ireland, for instance, to Spain or Portugal. We have lost to some to Belgium. What about flights uh, to and from the UK? Because Heathrow is now capping passenger numbers. What effect is that having? Big deal again, because uh, some of the airports, and Heathrow is not the only one doing it, Gatwick and Amsterdam have also done it. They've said, we, we can't cope in the terminal, similar to end of May in Dublin. Uh, let's ask the airlines to reduce the flights. It's a big deal for Heathrow because we've already reduced the flights. We've only we've 16 flights a day, which sounds a lot, but we had 21 before COVID. And British Airways had reduced from seven back to four a day. Aer Lingus, uh, you know, they've lost a couple through their own staff uh, mm. shortages. It, you're pairing back an airport, which is a very big feeder hub for Ireland, because a lot of people going to uh, Heathrow are not going to London. Yes, they're going to Heathrow and then they're going on elsewhere. So what happens if you turn up at the airport and the airline says, you know what, we're not actually, this, this flight you were due to get on, you've paid for, you've got your seat and everything booked, it's not leaving now. Is it happening? Is, it, is the turnaround or the decision being made um, as close to flight times? About 25% of our cancellations in Dublin have been close to flight times. That's within four or five hours. They're the ones caused by staff shortages. If you, you can tell by the rosters the night before, you're not going to make it. Passengers get emailed. Not your problem. It's the airline's problem to get you to where you're supposed to be. They're good at it. They're good at it because it happens in winter a lot that they run into weather events, they run into volcanoes, they run into thunderstorms during summer, and they run into the air traffic control strikes. And briefly, Owen, um, All Ireland Weekend Hotel prices, they are back in the spotlight once again. And this trick of dynamic pricing, as they call it, uh, that's really uh, coming to bear and costing people in their pockets. We're already paying so much for hotels this year. A very tiny number of rooms are still unsold for these weekends. So walk-ins are getting a really hard time. Part of the reason is that we've three years stacked up inbound tourism, which meant that even before the summer started, 80% of our hotel stock was gone. Another 16% went to government contracts. And some of it is out of the game because they never reopened because of staffing shortages. All of that would probably come back a bit next year. Mm. There'll also be another two or 3,000 hotel rooms in the system by next year. But that's not going to solve the problem for the All-Ireland Final. No, and I don't know if it will be solved by next year either. Owen, thank you for that. Always that is a great it from pleasure. us. Yeah. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram tonight, VMTV, but from all of the team here, good night. Take care.